One of the aspects of working with masks that I've not really explored up until now is how multiple paths can interact with each other. And that is the topic of this video. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 112 of Understanding Dark Table. So, when you are working with multiple drawn masks, whether they be circles, ovals, paths, brush strokes, or gradients, you can make them interact collectively in different ways. And this is something I've only just learned about. I can't believe I've been using this for six years and I haven't really explored this. I can see myself using this a lot going forward. Now, for the purposes of this video, I have created a plain black JPEG. The reason I've done that is because I don't need you to be distracted by an image. I really want you to understand just the fundamentals of how these masks interact with each other. So we are going to use Color Balance RGB because it's open. And I am going to click on the drawn mask icon. And we are going to start with just a circle like so. And we will turn on our mask. And there's the mask that we've created so far. Now, as you should already appreciate, wherever there is yellow, that portion of your image will get whatever adjustment you have dialed in with the parameters of the module in question and wherever it is black the image will pass through the module unaffected. Now let's say we want to create another shape. I will grab the path icon and I will go control click, control click, control click, control click, right click and we've got something close to a square. And let's just do one more. We'll go control click, control click, control click, right click. Okay, so we've got, roughly speaking, a square, a circle, and a triangle. How do these interact? Well, that is where the mask manager, which appears on the left side of the dark room view, comes into play. I have a new 10 month old pup, loves to chew things. Anyway, so the mask manager, when you add multiple paths to any module. Here in the mask manager, you will see GRP for group and the name of the module. And you will then see whatever paths you've added to that particular module. And below that, not indented, you will also see whatever paths you've created for this image. Let's start by clicking on the circle. Now you'll notice that these paths appear in the order in which we created them. That is important. If we right click on the circle, we get a pop up and the first option is remove from group. If we click on that, we remove the circle mask from this particular module. Now you'll notice that in the mask manager, the circle still appears, but it's no longer inside the group for the Color Balance RGB module. Now, what happens if we want to add it back? Well, that's where we come back over to the module and where it says drawn mask, two shapes used. We click on that and there is now a new subheading that says add an existing shape, circle number one. Now, any paths which exist over here in the mask manager, which are not part of the color balance RGB group, they would appear in this drop down subgroup of add existing shape if there were more. So we could just click on circle and hey presto, it's back. But you will notice that circle number one is now at the bottom of the stack because it is the most recent path we've added to the group. That will become important later on. Next up, I'm going to go up to path number one now, which is our square. Use inverted shape. So as you would imagine, this will invert the mask for this particular shape. So now our image is masked everywhere except for 
that square that we had created. And we can just do it again to get back to where we started. Next, we've got the four methods of intersection, and they are union, intersection, difference, and exclusion. This is where it's important to understand the order in which your paths appear. These intersection modes work in an upward direction. In other words, I can change the intersection mode for path number two, which is our triangle, and it will only affect the paths that are above it. They will not have any influence on circle, which is currently at the bottom of the stack. So let's use circle as our guinea pig because it's at the bottom of the stack. The default interaction or intersection mode is union. And what that means is add this path to any other path. So if I move the circle so that it partially overlaps the square, we have a union of those two paths, hence the name. If I now change this to intersection, think about what an intersection is. It's where two paths cross, right? So if we do that, what we've got now is a mask that only exists where the pixels were common to both paths. In other words, where the intersection occurred. So we've got that portion of the square which is overlapped by the circle. Next up, difference. If you remember your high school maths, difference was minus. So what we are saying is subtract the circle from anything that is above it. So if we go difference, we've got everything except for the circle. We've gone for the difference between the circle and everything above it. And finally, exclusion. This is like the union mode, except wherever those common pixels were, they get punched out. So now we are masking this portion of our image and this portion of the circle, but wherever there are common pixels, our image will not be processed. So far, so good. Okay, let's grab path number two, which is our triangle, and let's drag it over the top here. So now, because circle number one is in exclusion mode, and I really wish that there was a little check mark beside these. I mean, yes, you do have these icons, but these icons don't really... To me, they don't mean a whole lot. I really wish there was a little check mark or bold text to show you which mode you were currently in. But anyway, we know that we're in exclusion mode at the moment. So what we are seeing is everything except for the common areas. Okay, so that's just working with circles, ovals, and drawn paths. Just to prove the point, we can go with a brush stroke and we can just do something like that. And now we have our squiggly line, but again, it's at the bottom of the stack and therefore the exclusion control is not playing a part on that particular path. And that's where the move up and move down options come into play. If we move it up, now the fact that circle number one, which is at the bottom, which is in exclusion mode, now punches a hole through our squiggly line. So now, what if I was to bring in a gradient? As you would expect, all the same rules apply. We can have any type of interaction between the square and the gradient, just like we did with squares and circles and triangles. So whichever path is at the bottom is generally the one you are going to want to change the intersection mode on because you know it will affect everything above it. Not always the case, but you'll learn as you play around with this a little bit more when it does work and when it doesn't work. So we might say we want the intersection. And so we now have a square with a gradient fill to it. And we could 
then use the shift tool to change the speed of the gradient like so or we could put a bend in the gradient with our mouse wheel all the usual things that we've come to know and love from the various controls <sighs> gorgeous though this pup is he just found and destroyed my lens pen sensor clear that's the uh, pen you use for getting the dust and crap off the sensor of your camera. Thanks, pup. Fantastic. So, where was I? <laughs> the mask manager. All right, so we've got our two paths within our particular image. You will notice that at the top, we have a bunch of icons for the drawn mask elements. Frustratingly, these do not appear in the same order as they appear in every other module in Darktable. The brush stroke appears first. I don't know why. It's just random. But anyway, we can use these icons to create a new shape and it will simply be added to the list of shapes within the Mask Manager, but not by default added to whatever module we're currently working in which in this case is the color balance rgb so what i could do is go for a path and i will create something random like that and so that is path number three but as you can see in the color balance rgb group path number three doesn't exist so it's in our mask manager but it's not within this particular group just yet so as you can see from the group we have path one and the gradient but we do not have path three active in color balance rgb so what we would do is come over to the drawn mask shapes used and we would add path three and now that path is part of whatever type of complex mask we're trying to create finally all of the paths which exist that are outside of the group subheading, you can click to go duplicate this shape or delete this shape. Okay, to be honest, I've kind of lost my train of thought because I've been yelling at the dog because he just keeps on getting into mischief behind me. So if you go to another module, you will still see all of the paths that you have already created and you could go to the drawn mask and yes from add existing shapes you've got all of those shapes which are not currently in use or you can use the same shapes as the color balance rgb module once again that option will only exist for modules that are earlier in the stack so in this instance color zones comes after the color balance rgb module remember that the stack works from bottom to top so color balance rgb because we built that complex mask in that module we can reuse it in color zones but if we tried to go to any module that appeared lower down the stack or in other words earlier in the pixel pipeline prior to color balance rgb we would not be able to summon that mask for that particular whatever that module might be because it's all about hierarchy okay i think that does it for this video the next video will cover how you combine drawn and parametric masks within one particular complex mask shape I've still got a little bit of homework to do there. All right, look after yourselves and I'll catch you in the next one.